Okay, as we continue our landscape, we are moving to Photoshop because we are in the lab, but all of these things would work just the same in PhotoP uh, like we did in the first two videos. And we can work interchangeably between PhotoP online and Photoshop in the lab or on Photoshop, as long as we are saving as PSD files. That stands for Photoshop document. So here I have my vertical sketch and my horizontal sketch that I started. And I have my reference images here that are all at least 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. I took them all from Pixabay, so they have the added advantage of being Creative Commons open. So I have permission to use them without having to give any attribution or have to pay anything. Uh, I didn't quite finish my horizontal sketch before we ran out of time. So I have three elements put in there. I'm going to use the arch, the ice arch from 1A in the corner there, the ice waterfall from 1B in the immediate foreground here, and then it looks like 3A for my middle ground, this kind of frozen water, frozen lake that's melting, that's my snow melt. And then I'll do 5A up in the sky. And that's four references. And then maybe, let's see. I got some new references from Pixabay, just under Hazy Sky, and maybe those can be useful to me as well. Maybe I can use this one. I'll call this 1B. I already am saying 1B, sorry. I'll call this, um, let's call it 2A. Nope, I already have 2A. What do I want? I want 2B. So maybe I'll use 2B for a background layer here. And then I also found this nice drift ice one, which I'd like to use maybe in the, the middle ground. So I'll call that 3B, just so I can find it. So I've marked those orange, because those only relate to the horizontal one. So here I have a vertical format, taller than it is wide, sketched out, knowing what references would make that up. It's a very loose sketch, that's all you need. And here I have a horizontal format sketch. Now that I've done that, I can save that because this is a digital sketch. I can say save as, right now it's a PSD, and I'm going to save it under format as a JPEG, J-P-E-G, right into my folder, my assignment one fantasy landscape folder. And I'll just do a quality of eight, that's fine. This is just a sketch. And then I'll see it in my folder. I have my, my sketch here as a JPEG. You'll notice that my sketch has things that my PSD doesn't in the preview. That's because I haven't saved the PSD in a while. And if I click on the PSD, it will open it up as a PSD. So there is a difference between file format, even though the name is exactly the same. But all I need is the JPEG for this. And for the moment, I can minimize Photoshop and I can open up the Canvas course. And go to the assignment one posting. And I can update my sketch. Remember, you can always click on edit on a post you've started. And you can upload JPEGs and PNGs, what are called online formats, right into Canvas. And then just shrink them down so they fit. So the next step is I have my sketch. I have my reference images. I need to pick one. And then I need to start compositing, bringing in my reference images in a raster program, either Photoshop or PhotoP and building with them. So this is what we do. We're going to 
open up our sketch, even if it's just a screen grab we took from a, a photo of a physical sketchbook. We're going to open it up after we've posted it. We're going to open it up with Photoshop. There's a few ways to do that. I can right click on it and say open with and wait for Photoshop to appear in the options and click there. Or I can click on it and drag it down to where the, the Photoshop icon is in my dock. This is on a Mac operating system. I'm going to go ahead and close Illustrator because you want nothing open that's not necessary, especially as we start processing high resolution images. And because I'm always on a computer station and I'm always recording and there's a lot of stuff on this computer that's not on your workstations, sometimes this one can run a little slow, unfortunately. And so I want to maximize its capacity as much as possible by only keeping things open that are necessary. So now I have my JPEG of my sketch open. The first thing I need to do is choose which of these approaches I want to do. And I'm going to go ahead and work with the horizontal, even though I'm sure a lot of alterations can be made. And that's simply because I did a vertical last semester. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Command R on my Mac to bring up the rulers, just like we've done in PhotoP. And if I have the rulers open, then I can use the Move tool and I can drag down guides. And I want to drag these little blue guides around the sketch I want to use. What's nice about the guides is they're going to be perfectly horizontal and vertical, whereas my sketch isn't always perfectly horizontal and vertical. And now with those guides, I'm going to use the crop tool, which I don't think we've used before. So in this Photoshop tool, it is underneath the lasso and underneath what we use as the magic wand. It's the crop tool. And it will stick to our guides. So it will give me a little preview there. Whenever you're using the crop tool, especially true in Photoshop, make sure that your top options are empty. Because if there's anything in here, it's going to limit how you can crop it. It's also going to limit the resolution of what you crop. And you don't want that. So we just want an empty empty options crop tool, then hit return. It crops down to basically around our sketch. This is now our blueprint for our reference images. But we want to first make this blueprint, kind of the map that we bring our images onto, we want to make it large enough so that when we bring our images in, their pixels are the right size to print at high quality. So this is where resolution is incredibly important. To change resolution of an image in Photoshop, you go to Image and Image Size. Same in PhotoP. Right now, my image is 5 inches by 3 inches at 300 pixels per inch. If you did a screen grab of your sketchbook, yours might be you know, 10 inches by 7 inches by 72 pixels per inch. All that really matters are the pixels, the pixel dimensions right here. And what we want for this project is what it says on the assignment sheet. We want at least 8 by 10 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch. And because I'm using Photoshop and I'm using Pixabay images, all of which are bigger than 1,000 pixels, I can actually go beyond that. And I'm going to go ahead and do 14 inches wide. This is what I will recommend for anyone using Photoshop. And when I do 14 inches wide, I have resample checked. If I don't have resample checked and I click on 14 inches wide, it's going to immediately take my resolution down. Because if you don't check resample, it will always keep the same number of pixels. But if you click on resample, you allow Photoshop to mess those pixels up. In this case, it's going to grow additional pixels around what's already there. It's going to soften the image. It's called upscaling. It's going to make it lesser quality, but that's fine because this is our sketch that we're then bringing high quality images onto. So I check resample. I click a width of 14 because I'm doing a landscape format rather than a portrait format. It's wider than it is tall. That automatically fills in my height because this chain link is there. 
which makes it match the original proportions. And then I want to physically change the resolution. We're gonna, this is our first time because we're in the lab, we're gonna use our lab resolution. So professional print resolution is 300 pixels per inch. For our lab, our standard is 350. And that's so, if I want to, I can print this at 16 by 20 inches and still have it be a good print quality with our printers. So this gives me maximum flexibility, having at least 14 inches wide by 350 pixels per inch. And no matter how badly the resolution is of your sketch, Photoshop can upscale it. So now you can see all of those pixels it created around the original pixels I drew. Whether it was a soft brush or a hard brush, you can see that. Okay, so now we have a large enough image. You can always check at the bottom of your Photoshop file. In the bottom left-hand corner, it will tell you your pixel dimensions and it will tell you what your resolution is. So that's at 350 pixels per inch. And then my rulers are showing me pixels right now. So that's 500, that's 1000, that's 1500. I'm gonna change this and you're welcome to change this in your Photoshop as well by going to clicking on Photoshop, clicking on preferences, and then going to units and rulers. And I'm gonna change my, my ruler units from pixels to inches, because that's gonna help with printing. And that's all. And what's nice here is when you look at the preferences for units and rulers, you'll see what the, the document presets are. These are professional standard. Print resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Screen resolution is 72 pixels per inch. But we wanna make this first assignment able to be printed at at least eight by 10 inches, which means it has to be at least eight by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch. All right. Now I've got my sketch and I've got my guides around my sketch. I wanna get off the crop tool. Now I want to grow space around my blueprint. So think of this as this is my sketch. It's like a puzzle and this is the, the cheat guide to my puzzle pieces. I'm gonna move my pieces onto it, but I wanna have a table around my cheat guide. So I'm gonna to go to image canvas size, which is different than image size. This allows us to grow our working space. And instead of 14 by eight, I want all of you to choose a width that's 40 inches, if it's a landscape format you're working on, and a height that's 30 inches, so 30 by 40. 30 by 40 inches is the largest professional standard printing size. So unless you're doing a specialized uh, inkjet print of a billboard, the largest you can print on a professional four color lithography press is 30 by 40 inches. So that's a good standard to know. I'm going to anchor my image just right in the center. So that means it's gonna keep my image exactly as it is, but it's gonna grow more space all the way around it. And I'm gonna use the regular canvas extension color. That's the background, which is just gonna be white. So now you can see I have my sketch in the middle and I have a lot of working space around it. Some students like to set it up this way where they duplicate their sketch onto a new layer so I can select it and then I can hit Command J, duplicate it onto its own layer. And then they like to fill the background layer not with white, but with middle gray. So you can go to edit, fill, this is optional but just say 50% gray. And then whether you have the guides on or not, you can kind of see what your working space is and then what your sketch space is. Okay, now you can see my layers. I've got my sketch. I've got my background. Now I can start bringing in my source material and I'm gonna start from the background on forward. So 5A, my far background, I can bring this in 
and then I can size it 